My name is Tobias Meyer. I'm the worldwide head of the Contemporary Art Department. And I'm here to talk about our upcoming November sales. What was very important and something that we had consciously focused on is estate property. Property where you needed to sell these objects for very specific reasons outside the economic reasons of a strong market. And we were able to win the Myers collection and that forms a very important core of the sale. Then, and this was surprising but enormously satisfying to us, we have a very, very interesting and highest quality group of Andy Warhols, including one extraordinary masterpiece, which is the $200 bills. One of the great paintings this artist has made with a very good and conservative estimate of eight to $12 million. So that's a really surprising highlight of the sale and was a great shock to the whole collecting community when we announced that we had it. This drawing by Andy Warhol is incredibly rare and very, very important. It's large scale, there are only three in the world. They're all very known except for this one and now it's coming up to market. This is the third of what I call the Lost Warhols because it was in a closet since 1967 and has this unbelievable provenance. It was a present by Andy, who didn't give many presents, to a young woman Andy hired as a receptionist. He had given it to her unstretched and she kept it under glass for 40 years, 42 years. The Myers continued to collect in contemporary art from the 40s all the way up to the 70s and the 80s. And one of the most spectacular pieces they have from that period is this, this Donald Judd. As much as this is a minimalist work, Donald Judd couldn't get away from the actual beauty and the subtle touches of art. And for this reason, copper is one of the most desirable and prized mediums that Donald Judd did work in. It has that wonderful warm color, yet it still has the reflections and the play of light that are so wonderful when you have these different indentations and surfaces. But underneath that all is a very strictly thought out mathematical equation and you can take it apart a bit when you look at the form down here the thin width exactly matches the first void to the right and the shape the first shape on the right exactly matches the first void you have on the left and ultimately you meet in the middle with a void and a form that are exactly of the same size so there's a rhythm that you subliminally understand without even having to go into the mathematics of the piece. And it's just a beautiful, wonderful object. And the Myers own one from 1977, which is called Untitled 15. And it's a wonderful example of his abstractions that still have a sense of Long Island, which is, of course, where he lived. And it reminded him of his youth in the Netherlands. You almost sense the wind going across water or light playing across water. And this is, of course, what he was after. But you also see what he loved about paint. You, of course, have his brushwork here, which is a very standard traditional way. But then he would also place paper and other material onto the pigment and smear it. And you get these wonderful pulls. Another highlight of the sale, which also brings a degree of color and vibrancy in a very abstract manner, is this work by Mark Rothko on paper. And it's a very classic composition for Mark Rothko and of course his whole theory um, of abstraction was based on color. You get these saturated backgrounds that he would work off of and then would layer by layer put on different colors. Very often there's a hidden color underneath here that we don't see obviously but our eye picks up on this. There's a slightly darker hue underneath this particular form that you can start to see if you really look at it. You get these very brushy areas where he's playing with the eye. How do these forms meet? How do we read the colors? Are they coming forward? Are they receding? Are they resting and floating? He always wanted to have this kind of sense of freedom with his colors to activate our eye, but also to reach inside to the viewer and try and access their emotions and their personality and, as he said, the soul of the viewer.
One of the truly great works in our evening session of contemporary art this November is Bruce Nauman's Violin, Violence, Silence of 1981 to 82. A violin uh, is neither silent nor violent. Um, silence uh, is, is, is not melodic like a violin, nor is it loud like violence. Um, and violence is neither um, silent uh, or melodic like a violin. At the same time he was making these sort of text-based neons in the 80s, he also did some figurative neons where, where you had uh, two figures somewhat moving towards each other and battling back and forth their hands and their bodies. And in the same sense, you get this configuration in this sculpture where you see it is uh, almost triangular in a feeling and you see this kind of colliding of these two sides, right and left, uh, and then connected by the bottom. Uh, and, and it is this same kind of um, contradiction that then becomes a whole. There has not been a unique neon at auction in 10 years. And so we anticipate there'll be a huge amount of interest in this sculpture.